let's go move on to the next piece of evidence. And that is a case of this family. It is the Coptic, Egyptian Coptic Christian family. Uh, and I'm forgetting their names. <laughs> let, me, let me look for it real quick over here. Well, yeah, I'm sorry. Hossam uh, Aramanes. Now, this is very interesting. Here was a guy who used to get on Pal Talk, and he used to curse the name of Prophet Muhammad. And so, basically, to make a long story short, some people broke into his home, and as you can read the article yesterday, bind, gagged, and cut the throats of his entire family, including him. And here was a cursor of Muhammad. Now, many of you might be thinking, oh, those were Muslims who did it. Ah, uh, no. And a lot of people even think that, by the way, till today, those Muslims did it. But an investigation was conducted upon, uh, upon this matter, and it's concluded this was just a robbery, some bizarre robbery which gone bad. Let's, let's read over here. For many New Jersey city Muslims and cops who had lived in peace for years, but who had feared that the case might lead to, to the kind of sectarian strife that has plagued their communities in Egypt for centuries, there was an expression of relief that the two men, neither Egyptian nor Muslim, had, uh, had been charged in this murderous robbery. What they're saying here is the people who committed this crime, heinous crime, had nothing to do with Islam. These were some drug addicts or something like that who did this. But like I said, even till today, people are speculating that maybe somehow, some way they're affiliated, but I don't think so. So at this point, I think we've seen something pretty profound over here. Ibn Hajar al-Asqalani, rahimahullah, he mentions in his book, uh, Durar al-Kamina, that the Christians in his time would send out their preachers and missionaries to the tribes of the Mongols in hope that they would accept Christianity. One day, a Mongolian king accepted and adopted the Christian faith, so the scholars held a party and ceremony for this special occasion. He mentions that among the Christian missionaries was a preacher who wanted to give a sermon, wanted to give a speech. And so he stood up and began to insult the Prophet Muhammad And in that gathering was a hunting dog who was chained up and tied up by its owner. As soon as he began with the insults against the Prophet Muhammad this dog started to growl and snarl and tried to jump at this Christian missionary talking about the Prophet Muhammad So upon settling the dog down and it took a while and it took a lot of strength to do so They said wait a minute. We believe that this dog went nuts Because of your insults towards the integrity of Muhammad. He said no, 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 no This dog is just filled with arrogance and pride and honor. It thought I was going to hit it because when I speak I move my hands Don't worry about it. Just leave it some silly dog. So he continued with his insults this time his insults were filled with more vulgar words and accusations. It became worse. So that made the dog go absolutely nuts. It broke free from its chain and it jumped towards the man. It mentioned that it ripped out his throat in one bite and he died instantly. The dogs, the dogs had honor and integrity and they showed that for the Prophet Muhammad If the dog showed this love and honor for Rasulullah, what about you and I? What about you and I? Allahu Akbar. It was mentioned after that, فَعِنْدَهَا أَسْلَمَ نَحْوُ أَرْبَعِينَ أَلْفًا مِنَ الْمَغُولِ Because of that, 40,000 Mongols became Muslim due to that miracle. 40,000 accepted Islam due to that miracle. And it's as we said, it mentioned by Ibn Hajar al-Asqalani in his book, Adurar al-Kamina.